Hi there and welcome back. Alright, let's start going about creating a our storyline and of course creating our branching storyline because that's why we are in Twine in the first place. Okay, when, when you first open up Twine, um, what you see is you've got this one little uh, untitled passage node. Now I'm just left click um, holding and as I left click and hold I can drag that around and reposition that anywhere I like. I tend to be the kind of person where I like to work from the upper left hand corner and then branch out and down. Um, you might want to go from the middle and out, you might want to go from any number of corners. Tr do what you will like. Try a bunch of different things and see how you go. Um, now this is uh, going to be the very first of our passages. It's going to be the start of our story. And um, if I just double click on that, uh, what I have is Untitled Passage. I have double click on this passage to edit it, which is somewhat self-explanatory. Um, and if I accidentally deleted that, so I've got that little, uh, if I hover over it, I have these four options. One of which includes delete, of course. The other one, edit, which is effectively the same as double clicking on it. Testing the story will actually play the story starting from that passage, which will, I will show you when we have a little bit more. Um, and then set starting point this little rocket ship. Come on. There we go. That says start the story here. Okay, so let's say I accidentally deleted that. Are you sure you want to delete this passage? It can't be undone. Yes, Twine, I'm making a conscious decision. Um, I'm fully in charge of my faculties, and I do want to delete that passage, so <gasps> goodbye. Um, it's gone. Uh, well, if I want another one, all I have to do is just left click on this bright green passage button down here in the lower right hand corner of our menu. Ta da! I've got a brand new passage. This is great. Um, okay, I want to start my story. So I'm going to double click on this and give it a very short, um, meaningful name. So again, I'm thinking in terms of beats, so I want to be able to look at the names of all these passages and very quickly get a sense of how the story progresses from scene to scene. So our story starts um, with a character who is shipwrecked. And uh, now tags are funny. Tags don't actually do anything in Twine 2 yet, um, but I think maybe at some point they will. And so they're just they just kind of taunt me. They sit there, going, "I could be useful, but I'm not yet." Okay, so double click on this passage to edit it. I'm gonna highlight all that and just um, start writing. So uh, you wake up on an alien shore. Your dress is in tatters. Debris is scattered all around you. Whoops, that's the wrong button. Um, you hear a voice a distance growing stronger as it gets closer. Hello? Hello, are you alright? Miss, are you alright? And then, um, okay, so there's my very first scene. And now the next scene, so the moment my character, um, or the player's character, we should say here, uh, as we're working in second person here, uh, one, the moment that the player looks up and acknowledges this other individual, that's technically a new scene, that's a new beat. And we go from the scene shipwrecked, the beat shipwrecked, to introducing this new character. So I'm going to create um, the next passage by linking to it automatically. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to use two open brackets, and I'll say um, call out for help. And I'll do two closed brackets, and I'll hit enter a couple of times. So if I um, now just close this passage, Check this out. What it's done is it's created a brand new passage for me called Call Out for Help. 
Now, I could leave that passage as it is and say, okay, I definitely want my next passage to be called Call Out for Help. Um, but what I could also do, if I wanted to keep my passage names be the names of my scenes, what I could do is I could delete that. Ah, and when I delete that, my original passage turns red, which means it's saying, hey, by the way, there's something that's broken in me. I'm not linking to something. So we're going to create something new for it to link to. So I'm going to create a new passage. And I will call this um, uh, the sea captain. And I just go. I'll go ahead and close that now. All I want is the sea captain. Now back in shipwrecked. Um, what we're gonna do is we're just going to add that funky little line there. Type in the sea captain after it. I'm gonna close that down again. And it has created a new node for us. Let's just see what happens if I actually play this. Call out for help. There you go. So what happened here is, um, now if I just open this up again, uh, everything that's in front of this strange tall character here, and this um, this straight tall line exists on the backspace key. All you have to do is hold down shift, tap on the backspace key, which you'll find right above your enter key, and that gives you that tall line, um, which has a name. And some of you probably know that name. I don't know the name. So if you know the name, go ahead and leave a comment and uh, inform the rest of us as to what exactly that thing is called. Everything that's in front of that tall line um, is what the player actually sees when the game is playing. Uh, and everything after it is what the node is called that it's going to link to. So when I actually shut that down, so and I came back to that shipwrecked icon and I pressed play, we saw just that first dialogue from in front of the line where it just said call out for help and if I click on that I go to the passage that I created before so this is the this is the player window this is what opens up as we're testing our story and this is what the player sees um, when they're playing through this this text-based interactive um, game or just interactive experience okay so now, that's our first linear node. Obviously, we just go from one to one. There's only one option here. Very linear. I want to actually branch this now. Um, so let's move on to the next scene. Um, and we'll just we'll summarize this. Oh my, that was definitely the wrong button. I have a Wacom tablet in front of me right now, and I keep accidentally tapping on it. So let's uh, open that back up. Obviously, my twine story has saved, so it's not like I've lost any data or anything. Uh, so, the sea captain is helpful, sets you back to right, quickly, and so informs you there was a terrible storm looks like the ship was destroyed. No. No other survivors. And we'll say, tell the captain, so I'll look at the go, ask the captain about if he's seen your twin. Twine, huh? Let's get it. Captain, have you seen your twin? Twin survived. And we'll create an another passage, which will be... I'm just trying to think, what's a good passage for not telling the captain about the twin? I'll actually call this twin survived passage reveal having a twin. And we'll go ask the captain if there's any work on the island. Ha! 
hide having a twin. Okay, so both of these passages have brackets open and closed on either end. Um, in both cases I'm using uh, our little tall line divider to have one set of dialogue presented to the player, but actually call my scene or my beat something that's significantly more meaningful to me. And if I close that, you'll see it's now created two different nodes for me. I now have a branching storyline. Um, now let's say I want to actually connect those back together again. So uh, what I can do is... I'm going for the sake of, for your sake of not having to sit here listening to me narrate while I write, I'll go, stuff happens. Um, and I've got the option to, uh, I'll just go, discussion happens. And then I've got the option to work for Olivia. So I'll go apply to work for Olivia. Because I mean, one beat has to come before the other beat. Before you can go to the beat work for Olivia, you have to have the beat apply to work for Olivia to see if you can or not. And apply to work for or Sino. And we'll say that both of these passages can actually end up exactly the same way. Um, just the difference is whether or not the player has told the truth. Have they said that they have a twin, or have they said that they, or have they not said that they have a twin? Have they kept that hidden? Now, well, check out what's happened here. And this is where we start to get into a little bit of visual spaghetti, so it's really important to keep track of where you're at um, with these stories. I'm going to move all my little nodes down to the middle here, so I've got room for these two branching storylines to spread out. Now I, I moved all those options by dragging a selection box around them and just left-click dragging the whole lot. So the re because both these two nodes, hide having a twin and reveal having a twin, both of them have the same options, exactly the same, to the letter, apply to work for Olivia, apply to work for Orsino. And I copied and pasted these to make sure they were exactly the same. Because they're exactly the same, um, only one version of that passage got created, but this node links to, both of these nodes link to them. You'll see both of them link to apply to work for Orsino, because of course that is included in both of these passages. And uh, reveal having twin, also, both links to apply to working for Olivia and apply to working for Asino, because again, same exact dialogue. Um, and if I go ahead and I press play now, uh, we get the scene prior to the sea captain, um, the conversation with the sea captain, my options, ask the captain if he's seen the twin, ask the captain if there's any work on the island. If I click on that, discussion happens. Let's say I go back though, and I wanted to ask the captain if he's seen my twin instead. Boom, discussion happens. Apply to work for Olivia. It's going to be exactly the same passage. And the player never necessarily, unless the player actually goes back to play it a different way, they don't know if this is coming back to the same passage. Now the thing that we can do to make sure that if they do play it um, through again, they see how the story changes based on the different options, what we can do is even though there's only one passage, we can set a clause in here that says if they visited one or the other of these hide or reveal having a twin nodes, change the dialogue slightly. Um, and so that's, that's part of tracking player progress, which we'll be doing in a future video.